things that intrigues me about both car sharing and ride sharing is that it can dramatically change the number of trips that an individual takes and the number of people in that car. Car sharing makes people pay the full costs of each trip as they drive. Uh, they save $600 per month in what they would have otherwise spent operating and parking and insuring a personal car. But they also tell us uh, that it helps with personal health, that they walk, they bike uh, 10 to 15 percent more than they did otherwise. Um, Zipcar is a uh, global car sharing organization. Car sharing is a better way to use a car. It enables members uh, to join simply with uh, providing a driver's license, uh, a credit card, they pay an annual fee, and they get a card in the mail uh, that is their access to what I call a, is a flexible fleet at their fingertips, different types of cars that they can reserve for one all-inclusive rate by the hour or by the day. Uh, that rate includes gas, insurance, $300,000 of liability, uh, more like a personal policy, um, and maintenance and home location parking. You pick up the car and return it to uh, its home location. I, I use car share in two main ways. I use it at home. Uh, my wife and I do own a car, um, but we share a car between the two of us, and often we need to go get things for our home or run errands or move furniture. When a member joins Zipcar, 40% uh, of them tell us that they avoided buying a car or were able to sell a car um, thanks to the wheels when you want them convenience of Zipcar. Um, the second way is that the nonprofit that I work for is called the Freshwater Trust, and we use Zipcar quite extensively for our travel in the region. Um, our staff go out to project sites um, and they use Zipcar at that point. We work closely with a number of our host municipalities that uh, do a number of things to support car sharing and encourage good behavior and good policy. A couple of things like the allocation of on-street parking spaces and designating them and enforcing ticket and tow policies that support car sharing. We've taken public parking spaces and uh, given them to car sharing companies to raise the visibility of car sharing. Now when people visit and they see these big orange poles on the streets and they think about moving here, they realize they don't need to have a car. Car sharing has become an extension of the public transportation system. Uh, some even walk the talk with their own municipal budgets where um, the District of Columbia uses Zipcar technology in its city-owned fleet to enable them to have fewer cars with the latest hybrid and environmentally friendly technology. We have more people uh, using car sharing per capita than almost anywhere in the country. Regionally, uh, through Metro, through Arlington, uh, through DC government, there was a push to promote car sharing. And I think that that's one of the reasons we've seen a 5.6% decline in car registrations uh, from 2005 to 2008. Portland was one of the uh, first cities in North America for car sharing. It started in 1998. In addition to being just a, a progressive, very walkable city with a very high uh, use of cycling for daily commuting, about 9% of people in Portland uh, cycle to work on a regular basis. Um, they've also had a very progressive uh, approach in city planning. Beyond providing the spaces for the car share companies to use, the city supports car sharing by putting signage and marking at each space and enforcing the spaces. Our most recent survey here in Portland shows that the number of people who drive less than a thousand miles per year increased from 28 percent to 48 percent after they joined Zipcar. So when people are car sharing, which means they're paying for cars by the hour or by the day, they totally rationalize which is the right mode choice for, for any particular errand.